Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity, and this is going to be Lomo versus Mensol Zero. And Mensol just spent a little bit of time kind of messing with his configuration. He was kind of practicing versus another Zig opponent. Might be a little bit off in this game as a result. We'll see. Must win situation, I feel like, for Oz, because either Lomo or Haya has to take down a game to let Jadong do his stuff. And really, Jadong is the strong part of Oz. He's kind of their key component in any matchup. I will be whispering this commentary to try to not wake my roommate up. I think I might have caused him to stir right there. I pause momentarily and look back. Okay, no, he isn't stirring. Um, <laughs> uh, donation tab is up. I have managed to raise enough money to pay prior debts, at least as far as the internet goes, which will be my first priority. And I've got enough money. I'm going to look at motherboard, RAM, and chip prices because those are the major components I need to replace, which are kind of the heavy three. I've actually got a uh, hard drive. Uh, I bought a hard drive actually not too long ago because of the commentaries that were taking up so much room. Actually, right when I think a year ago I bought a hard drive, so it's not in too bad shape. I've got a really nice case and uh, power supply still, so that's kind of the components I'm trying to look at. Had a couple people PM me about regular donations, and I'll just, um, or a couple people ask about regular donations. Go ahead and PM me on YouTube about that, and I'll see what I can um, set up in that regard. Wow, cute puppy. Anyway, really excited about this matchup. Lomo, one of those guys who, I think he's one of the three, him, Lita, and Up Magic, really the three that kind of popular made Mech trendy, where they're the kind of the trendy Terrans, with Mech versus Zerg. Looks like Mensol in the, up, in the meantime. Purple upper left-hand corner, by the way, not sure. Ooh, Teal switched it up on me. No, Lomo's purple bottom left-hand corner. Mensol, Teal upper left-hand corner. He's, he's going the upper right-hand corner. Looks like we're going to see an overpool here out of Mensol on Guard's Garden. Which, I'm surprised he's not going 12th pool, because he does have that protected secondary behind his base. Maybe he wants to make sure... And this is the thing, I, I don't understand the idea of an overpool on this, because you do get the early Zergling pressure up on the front door, but at the same time, Lomo has that protected secondary he can take, so he can just bring those Marines to the front. It's really not going to stop an expansion from going up. We'll see what he's got up his sleeve. Mensal is a pretty solid player, I'd say. He's one of those guys who can pull things. I, I'm not worried about him at all, and whoa... Lomo going for gas right off the bat, so it looks like he might be going for a mech build, but not sealing his front door. He's going to try to lie on the scout, the, or the complete lack of scouting on the opposite end. Might get in trouble with this, because he's sending an SCV now. Zero will scout that upper right hand base with that overlord momentarily, and it looks like that drone scout is headed down to the bottom left, so he he could get caught by the... Oh, wow. Because he didn't block off his front door, and he was relying on the scout, I think he actually might get uh, hit by these Erglings. Maybe he was expecting a 12th pool as well, just because well, get the logic I was speaking, but Mensol, because he's going... Because Zero going a little bit off-kilter, going for those early Erglings, Lomo's not going to be in time. I don't think he's going to have enough to really fight this off. So he's going to have to pull a lot of SCVs on the line. Uh, now that drone scout coming down. I think, yeah, Lomo's just assuming he was going to be going up against a 12th pool. Or, I'm sorry, a 12th hatch, or yeah, a 12th pool. I guess that works. But now that, that drone scout is working way against that, and there's going to be a good amount of circles. You can see flooding all the way down already, and oh, Lomo not bringing... Yeah, the, that vulture's is going to be way late, and he's not bringing any SCVs off the line. So what Lomo needs to do is he just needs to keep those SCVs alive, give him, allow himself to get some time to get that factory up, and then if that factory gets up in time, he'll have a vulture at least to micro... And say, oh, he's not producing any more marines! This is disastrous. So Lomo looks like he's going to lose on builds. Just playing way too risky. Four Zerglings running around, and that's got to be frightening. And now the SCV's coming off the line, but the, <laughs> the Zerglings have already breached, and I think they're going to be able to run around and stop that factory from going up pretty well and kill additional Marines from going up. I'm doing that right there. You can see, you can see kind of the aggravation and panic in Lomo's eyes. He's like, hoo hoo, buddy. Uh, it looks like the Zerglings are taking a bit of damage, but Mensal still going to be able to pick to this. Maybe not. Ooh, nice micro on Lomo's part, keeping that second Marine alive. And he still might be able to get a Vulture, so not a complete loss, but now a two hatch build coming from Mensal, and he's going to be able to slow that expansion from going down. Now bringing the Zerglings home, and there's that Starport. Like I said, there's something about Lomo. He just loves his Wraith. I guess it's conceivable he could be going drop, but I still think he's going to end up going with those starports. Creep Colony on the front door to stop a Vulture from coming around that cycle. Roommate stirring again, I think. Um, so I guess I'll keep this to these two commentaries, and I'll go to the third game tomorrow. Apologies, guys. But I do have to be somewhat of a considerate roommate. Anyway, I think this is going to be a pretty fast match anyway. So, well, maybe he's snoring. I think that's snoring. This is going to be the most awkward commentary ever. So, <laughs> tucking to Lair. Um, I'm, I'll do it tomorrow just to be safe, but uh, get these two games out for you guys. Because I love you guys. Um, but Vulture going to wander out. It's going to have to hold up. That's the other nice thing about this map is, is that sunken colony. It's not like on other maps like Byzantium 2 where they could just kind of cycle by. 
and things like that. First Wraith being produced, I don't see the second port going down yet. So now switching, oh, it looks like he was going with one SCV on gas, interestingly enough. So it looks like it's going to be Wraith into expansion, and I don't know with just a single port that he's going to have enough. I guess it's going to come down to how many larvae that Mensa leaves out. Ooh, getting Hydro Stand down as well. A couple Scourge being produced, and he's almost playing like this, as though he's playing against a Protoss who's going Corsair. So interesting build all together. There's that command center being placed, but uh, yeah, I'm going to be curious to see whether we're going to just see a couple Scourge. There isn't going to be cloaking with that Wraith, so that Wraith isn't going to have a lot of support uh, to stay alive, and it's going to have to run all the way back to the Marines if it's going to want to stay alive. Uh, it shouldn't be too hard for Mensol to really knock that down, and that'll also deny a bit of the scout. Point being, altogether, Lomo uh, not doing too well with his builds. He is so, so sharp, though, uh, with Corsair, with, I'm sorry, Wraith, and it looks like he's already losing. Now he's seeing that Spire flipping back around. Uh, and the Hydros, I guess, just to make sure that he didn't lose any Overlords. Engineering Bay now going up. Secondary down. Lomo's playing very light. He's um, only pers a single Vulture, a single Wraith up against a two hatchery build, which stereotypically for Zerg is a very large unit build, and now switching back to Medic Marine, getting a science facility down to get quick Psy Vessel, but not producing any additional Marines, curiously enough. I guess he wants to make sure he gets that science vessel up to deal with any Mutalisks that were, uh, that'll be produced. Uh, I don't think it's going to be in time, because that looks like there's five Mutalisks being produced right now, so kind of off timing from 0-0 zero, zero playing kind of really well against this, playing kind of off-kilter, which you I, I, you can see how Lomo's just kind of thrown off. His timing's just kind of confused. He's got two idle SCVs, actually, in the upper left-hand corner. Now the Scourge coming out with, it looks like some Scourge in the mix here, or Scourge, if you prefer, um, pushing up with these Mutalisks and not even going to take out an Overlord. And now he has nothing to stop this. He's got five Marines. They're going to be very easy to micro against uh, with those three Mutalisks, and there's no way he's going to be able to hold that secondary, I don't think. He just can't cover it, and I don't think he has, yeah, the turret not up in time. Um, and he's not going to have her coverage at all, so very bare minimum forces here. Now Hydralisk pushing up as well, and that's it. Two Marines left. Hydralisk and Zergling should be able to take out that turret to the south, and oh, Lomo's base completely free for attack. Uh, Mutalisk is just going to have a field day, and you can see again the surprise look on Lomo's face. That's again like the oh crap. I like this, this style here from Zero. Uh, I, I hate to say it this way, but it reminds me of F91. It looks very kind of off-balance, very sharp, and it's really kind of uh, interesting and fun to watch. Although I have to say Lomo's kind of that way for Terran as well. Two Marines trying to stop five Mulesks, a single Wraith trying to get away, <laughs> just dodging back and forth and immediately getting picked off, or ultimately getting picked off, I should say. And now uh, one Marine left, and now Mensel's going to take the economic advantage, getting that third base, trying to get cloaking up, but uh, really it's just kind of, it's a bit too late. There should be reinforcements pouring into his base after not too long. <laughs> it looks like he's going to work against that control tower as well. Looks like he's already got reinforcements, just kind of chilling on the outside base. The single Scourge in position to... Ooh, it looks like it's not going to be able to uh, kill that Wraith, but cloaking immediately as it's uh, pouring down. Now Hydralis pushing up. And this is the thing, though, is, is that single Wraith is not going to be able to take out all those Mutalisks and defend, and that single Marine is not going to be able to deal with these two Hydralis killed at the same time. So maybe I'm going to eat my words. Zergling's pouring down, though. So, and this is the nice thing about Zero. Zero's really throwing kind of a combo of units where he's like, okay, if you're going to try to spread your tech, I'm going to make sure that you have to spread your tech. You're not going to be able to dedicate one direction or the other. If you're just building Marines, I'm going to send Zerglings at you. If, or your Wraith, I'm going to send Zerglings at you. And I'm just going to make sure that, you know, if you just go pure anti mutalisks that's, uh, you're just going to get overwhelmed from underneath. Uh, really, Mensal controlled this game, I think, when he had those first Zerglings out and denied that second expansion. But Lomo playing very risky after that, uh, really going kind of a dedicated anti, I would say, uh, well, I'm not sure what that was anti exactly. I'm not sure what he was trying to pull. He was just hoping, I guess, that Mensal wasn't going to push up any pressure. But, uh, yeah, Mensal surprising me. He's going to take out a game. This is going to put huge pressure in the Gem uh, Gwemchi versus Haya game because Gwemchi is no, no lightweight. There's GG. You can see the, the frustration on Lomo's face. That was a really fun match to watch, though. Very fun. I hope you guys examine that one. But anyway, um, game three will be up tomorrow. I'll try to do that as soon as I get home.